Mercier gets third. All right, so again, two years, one champion. The race is here, the time is now. We're top of the world, and I can't come down. No, no, I can't come down. This is how it feels to stand on the clouds. In his last junior race, can anyone stop his quest for a perfect season? This is how it feels to stand on the clouds. Junior's ready. the world-renowned event highlighting the absolute best ice cross downhill athletes from all across the globe. Today, for the first time ever, we broadcast live the final race of the Junior World Championship featuring the talent that will make up the future of this spectacular sport. Hello, everyone. I'm your host, Troy Mannering, bringing you all the action from Edmonton, Alberta, in Canada. Young, motivated, skilled, and with no shortage of bravado, these athletes are on the fast track to the next level in ice cross downhill. But what is the Junior World Championship? Let's take a look and find out more. The Junior World Championship was introduced in 2016 to attract new blood. The championship, made up of four Red Bull crashed ice events, is open to riders from age 16 to 21 and gives future stars of the sport a chance to learn from the best, including former champion Artu Pilainen. I think it's a great chance for young people to get into the sport, so in the future, competitiveness keeps alive. With this kind of test, you will know something about your skating abilities. Basically, it's about how your lungs work, about the oxygen levels and this stuff. I think you have a good chance here to build up all of your skills in a couple of years and uh, really challenge the all, all of the top guys. So I wish you good luck. The next generation of riders are in the gates and ready to step up to the challenge. Alongside me again, a man who's guided many of the new athletes down the courses of the Red Bull Crash Dice, our expert, Reed Whiting. Yeah, thanks, Troy. Yeah, it's amazing looking back last year. Like you said, I've took a lot of these guys on the tracks, seeing how far these juniors have come in just one season, especially guys like Mirko Locke, the Jojo Velasquez. Like, these guys really are the future, and I can't wait to see where they end up. Well, there he is right there, Mirko Lati. Two world titles in two seasons, and he has found his rhythm on the big tracks of the Red Bull Crash Dice faster than most. Racing at full tilt, he has given us a glimpse, glimpse, excuse me, of the future of Ice Cross Downhill. Since the introduction of the Junior World Championship last season, it's been all about one man, Finland's Mirko Lati. As the first ever junior world champion in 2017, he's been the man to beat. The pressure was on for 2018, but the ice cold Finn takes it in his stride. Mm, of course, there's a little bit more pressure than last year, but um, I don't mind. <laughs> Looking back, his ice cross downhill career didn't have the smoothest of starts, with his first ever event in Marseille not going to plan. I crashed pretty hard in Marseille. In the training. I was in the hospital uh, like 15 hours there, so I couldn't make it in the shootouts. Luckily, there were no serious injuries, and he was back at the next race with his confidence intact. It's been his defining characteristic ever since. I have a personal mental trainer, so we've been talking about that a lot, so it's, it's now gone, and I'm focusing on that new race. In the juniors, there's only one race to go for Mirko Lati. With the World Championship secured for a second year in a row, he's taking aim at history and the perfect World Championship season. Whoa! 
one win away for Mirko Lati's perfect season. Now he's actually won three events of the four so far, so his points total would be 3,000, but there's a dropout, so one of the events gets tossed. Jesse Sauren sitting in second place. Richie Jojo Velasquez, unfortunately, not here this weekend in third, and Yoni Sarinen. So there's three Finns in the top four guys there, and that man right there. Basically, this is a victory lap for him, and uh, all he has to do is come across that finish line in first place. But there's a few guys that want to take a win ahead of the big man, and that's one of them right there. And there's another guy, Yoni Sarinen and Jesse Sauren. Jesse Sauren is a very solid skater, and uh, I think we're going to see some great action from both of these guys, but I think absolutely the favorite is Mirko Lati today, and we're going to hear from Yoni Sauren, and he's in the finish area right now. Yoni, Mirko Lati has dominated this season. What's it going to take to beat him here? Yeah, I think I just need a good start for the race and stay in front of him because it's hard to pass him. He's so strong skater. But it's possible. Yeah, I think it's possible. Next season, Merco moves up to the men's division, leaving the Junior World Championship wide open. Is that on your mind? Yeah, of course, I've been waiting for that, <laughs> to be honest. So I think I have a good chance to win the championship next year. Thanks. Good luck. <laughs> so this track is the second longest Red Bull crash ice track of our season at 450 meters and promises to be really fast. Let's take a closer look at the newly designed course here in Edmonton. The final event of the Red Bull crash ice rolls into Edmonton, Alberta in Canada and the track promises to be a doozy. A new start up speed now to clear the Canadian big air and prepare to break hard heading into the 180 degree BF Goodrich traction corner. Apropos traction is the name of the game here. Following this massive direction change come the Maple Leaf and speed rollers followed closely by the very tricky Hyundai end section. With two height variations and off camber wedges a good line here is critical. Well, Gabe, I guess you're kind of curious why I brought you up here tonight. You know, we're you're kind of at the end of the career, a little bit washed up, but tonight we're going for the uh, old man's division. I like to call it the master's up, class. Fresh laundry. Yeah, there ain't too many out here that do uh, do this at our age. Be like two gingers. There ain't nothing like two gingers going down this track, firing it up, buddy. Let's I'm go. I'm still not going to let you beat me, though. <laughs> Let's see. Let's see how old the wheels are. It's a good start. Jesus. Oh. He's flying out of here. I, I can't jump it. it. Oh, he got oh, it. Nice pass. Oh. I'm gonna take him in here. Here's he coming. Oh, oh nice baby. Move. God, this guy's way faster than I thought. I'm coming at you, Gabe. I'm coming. Here we go, Where baby. Where is that old guy? Wow. I hear that old Ooh. engine turning. Let's go, buddy. I'm coming. We gotta show him what we can do. I'm coming, We're not too old. All right, she's going to get tough. Okay, this place is oh, so no. sketchy. Ruts everywhere. Come on, Gabe. Where you are, old man? Let's do this. Oh! Not enough. Oh! oh. A spot. Woo! There we go, baby. Hey, that's how the old men get it done. Let's go. <laughs> the old men getting it done, Reader. Wow, that's awesome. That was a fun one to watch. Now talk about this track a bit because you've been on it lots. What's the hardest part here and what's the hardest thing about this track? You know, no doubt the tombstone section down there at the bottom. I mean, it's a really tricky hump style feature. Guys do it every which way. We saw Colton Haywood earlier today and LCQ race really taking it nicely. It's a difference maker and we'll see how it affects these juniors. All right, well, it's hard to tell here because the lighting is down a little bit along the side of the course, but the Edmontonians have come out in force. It is sold out here tonight, and it's the first time ever where we're doing a real live broadcast for a Friday night contest here with the juniors. It's a beautiful evening, clear sky. It's actually gotten a little bit warmer over the last few de days leading up to the event. It's a relaxed minus six at the moment. And at the, mo at the time, that's gonna make conditions on course really favorable. All right, let's get ready for our quarterfinals. Here is quarterfinal. Each one, descendant, fellas. 
So quarterfinals, Heat 1, Mirko Lati, Derek Abramson, Alex Schreifels, and Justin Hubble. Three Americans in the mix here. Riders yeah, ready. Five seconds warning. Great start by Mirko Lati. As expected, he takes an early lead, but I think that's Justin Hubble's behind him, isn't it? Yeah, he's looking real solid. Yeah, Mirko Lati has been so incredibly strong. I mean, obviously, he's the favorite here to take the junior competition, but as we always say with Ice Cross Downhill, anything and everything can happen. So as long as he stays on his feet and skates the way he has been skating all season long, we will see him basically using this as a victory lap to make a perfect season. And that's really what his focus is here this weekend. Yeah, it's funny, all three of these guys, these Americans, went to high school together racing with Miracle right now. All good buddies. It's good to see them all get a run, but only one of them is moving on. All right, well, Mirko Lati, a clear win right there. And that was Alex Schreifels that came in in second place. Excuse me, it wasn't Justin Hubble. Ooh, a lot of guys losing their edge on that corner there. It's just really tough on that traction corner to really stay on your feet. I mean, you've got so much speed coming into there. It's so easy to lose an edge. And let's watch, this is that last feature what I was talking about. You cannot do it much better than that. Miracle pulling his knees right up to his chest get his feet back down in the transition. Perfect. So there you go. Alex Schreifels, Mirko Lati moving on, and we go back to the quarterfinals. Heat number two with Jesse Sauren, Yoni Sarinen, Christian Rogger, and Mike Tremblay. Riders ready, five seconds warning. All right, the two Finns with a good start, basically taking a shoulder-to-shoulder -shoulder hole shot. And it looks like it's Sauren, Sauren, excuse me, out in front, Sauren right there with him. Boy, they are evenly matched. But Sauren makes a good pass at the BF Goodrich traction corner, and then they exchange positions once again. And Sauren is out in front, Sauren in second place. Tremblay looking like he's trying to catch up from third. That's going to be tough against the two Finns who have a permanent track in Yveskula, Finland, where they can train all winter long, and they have done. Oh, Sauron goes down. Tremblay goes down. It's getting all mixed up, but Sauron was quick enough to get back up, and now Christian Rogger sitting in second place, third place, excuse me, and he goes down over the tombstone, and that leaves it wide open for Sauron, who comes in second place behind Sauron. In it. Wow, that was a fun heat, you know. Oh, my goodness. We, we really expected those Finns to do what they just did, take it, but, you know, they caused some chaos there at the end, opened the door for Rogger in the back, but the guys just couldn't make the move. You know, these guys are both so even, Sarnin and Sarin. Next year, two of the top guys competing for the title. Like we talked about earlier, Lati's gone, so it just completely leaves the field wide open. And these two are guys we're gonna see near the top, no question. Totally even, they're both tall, lanky skaters, but they, like you said, they get a lot of ice time in Finland, always on the track, and it really makes a big difference in how they perform out here. Sauron got really lucky on that corner, by the way. He just went down, but managed to uh, get back up a little bit quicker than the others, and there we see Roger. He just did the full header over the tombstone, and that is why they're calling it the tombstone. It will take you out faster than you know it. Do it. Faster than wider. There you go, faster than wider. Nice, very nice. All right, Sauron and in Sauron moving on to the next one. And we move back to the top quarterfinal seat number three coming up. So a real pleasant surprise has been Lukas Korczatanski from Poland. He's in this heat with Luka Engler, Maxim Krokin, and uh, Skyler Diamond Burchuk from Canada. Never heard that name on the, on the twist list before, so let's see how he does. Riders ready, a five second warning. Good start by all four of these guys. They are right on top of each other. Korsatansky taking the lead. And look at this, over the Canadian big air. Everybody trying to glide through that one nice and clean. And wow, Skyler was in the second position, but he just got looped out at the BF Goodrich 
traction corner. He didn't have enough traction. Luka Engler with the lead at the moment with Korsatansky sitting in second place. Luka Engler looking very strong in this super bottleneck section. It's really thin there, widens out now as they drop down into the Hyundai end section. Super tricky and there's the tombstone. Engler does a header but he gets right back up and it's going to be Korsatansky getting this one just ahead of Engler by virtue of Engler going down over those last couple of rollers and then we got a couple of swimmers coming across the line there with Broken and Diamond Virgil. Wow, what a headbutt to the ice by uh, Engler. That yeah. was something else and the recovery just bounced off like a little better. bounce ball right up and made it through. That couldn't have felt good though. Great start by all the guys. Like you said, it was really super even off the bat. Even we see a newcomer coming up from Canada. Diamond Burchard looked really solid until the traction corner. Again, it's so hard to keep your edge in here. Look at all the ruts. These guys coming here so fast, just can't hold it together and everything kind of changed right there. Angler really took control, started looking really solid and of course Stansky right in his heels until here. Yeah, and that's that spot where you gotta suck your knees up as high as you can so you can really float that one. Otherwise you're in big trouble. We saw that with Luca Engler, it's a perfect example. It's so hard to get your feet back down there trying to do it full speed. That's why you see guys kind of coming in there at an angle, trying to get the backside, but if you come in straight, you have no chance. All right, well, there's Diamond Birching. He's out, but uh, it was a great effort. Nice to see him in Korsatansky and Engler moving on. All right, back to the top of the quarterfinals. Heat number four, here we go. In this one, we've got Philippe. Carval Hero from Switzerland, Max Neymark, Francis Boudreau, and Veltin, Valtin Dufour, excuse me. A rider's ready, a five seconds warning. I just gotta say, I'm loving our new starter, he's fun. All right, really nice start there by Pava Hiro, who has been a real, real nice addition on the juniors. We're going to see him doing well down the road. Comes into that traction corner a little bit too hot. Kind of gets sketched out and is dropped back down to second position at the moment. Max Neymark right in first place and uh, pushing hard. It looks like Max Neymark has opted to uh, add the layout race after a pretty heavy crash in. Finland, just a little bit of safety as he comes over the tombstone. Nicely done. Oh, Neymar just a little toe pick over the last roller, and it's going to be Neymar winning this one with Carvalhiero. Then Boudreau, and finally Dufour. Nice solid heat. You know, Max Neymar's a guy I keep seeing get a little better every race. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Another Finn. Another. <laughs> exactly. It's crazy how many Finns are super solid riders competing with the top guys. It just goes to show you, you get a few permit tracks, you get more opportunity, and guys just develop. Well, we have four finished riders going into the semifinals. Let's look back here. And this is coming off the big jump into the step up. Again, we see in that traction corner, some interchanging there. That's where Neymar kind of took control, made a really nice pass in Cavalero, and really stayed in the lead the entire race. Super smooth, and as you see the guys in the back just going down, you got to have your edges so sharp in a corner like that to really get in there and dig into those ruts. All right, quarterfinal heats are done and dusted, and we've got semifinals coming up. The first one's going to have Mirko Lati, Jesse Sauren, Joni Sarinen, and Alex Schreifels. Of course, the second heat, Lukas Korsatansky, Philipp Carvalhiro, Max Neymark, and Luca Engler. We've got, we've got a crew of young and All right, so semifinal heat number one. We'll have those guys up in the gates shortly. Before that, though, 
Balance is key here in a sport where you're literally skating on the razor's edge. And I'm not even kidding, it is razor's edge. You need it to be successful, and it's not always as easy as it looks. Balance in Red Bull crashed ice and ice rest downhill in general is very important. Many people underestimate the balance part of the sport. I do a lot of coordination trainings and what I like the most is the sport specific training which is skate park, which is riding our forest track, which is yeah, difficult stuff like slacklining, jumping on, on bars and off. It's, it's really also a challenge to find uh, exercises and drills that provide that difficulty so you, you progress in your coordination and balance. I just needed to get better on features and you know controlling my body in the air so I'm not flailing all around. It's something I really tried to focus on as well is pumping you know not only into those transitions but out and gaining speed not letting those features slow me down but rather gain momentum into the next feature. Nas passed, passed him! Nas, what a fantastic job! We just have these little tiny blades on the ice that the whole balance aspect of the sport just makes it so chaotic and, and produces all this action. And if the balance is wrong, then your race is wrong. Instead of skating in a normal hockey profile of like 18 to 20 feet, athletes are skating at 28, 30 foot profiles. Makes it a lot flatter and there's more blade on the ice and ultimately gives you a lot more balance. I mean, if you see some of us crash, you have to know that these are all trained athletes and they are the best at what they do. And if you see one crash, there's definitely a reason for it. Nas goes down, Proxel takes the lead. Well, Reed, I mean, you know these blades are super thin. Let's, let's put it in perspective. It's narrower than a pencil, so balance is absolutely key. Talk a little bit about the things that you're experiencing out on an ice patch like this and that balance that's required. Yeah, I mean, you just think about it, like, we're taking jumps the size of, like, big airs in ski and snowboard competitions. They're landing on, like, a five to six foot long ski or board, and we have these little tiny pieces of steel to maintain that balance and air awareness. And I mean, it's just insane what these guys are capable of doing, like you saw there, all the training, balance stuff. These guys do it all in the summer just to be prepared for what Red Bull Crash Ice throws at them. Well, uh, Mirko Lati, we definitely know he has got plenty of balance and uh, he's looking good so far. All right, down to the finish area, Jesse Sauren is with Bree. Jesse, how are the conditions out there? I'm sorry? How are the conditions out there? Uh, ice is pretty fast, but of course it's, it's super rough. Like I told big on that last corner section. We know how dominant Mirko Lati has been. What's it going to take to beat him tonight? Uh, I don't know. Maybe I have to ask some, ask some power from the out, up, but I don't know. Good luck. Thanks, Jesse. To beat that man, you may well require a little bit of divine intervention. He has been so incredibly strong this year and he continues to show that skill level that is going to take him into the men's division next year. He no longer qualifies to skate with the junior, so he absolutely has to be up with the men. And as you look at the Hyundai end section, that very tricky chicane down at the bottom there, we get ready to send our semi-final heat number one, which will be coming up great crowd on hand. It has gotten a bit cooler, but the temperature is still mild enough for these people to be out here and enjoying and for our athletes to be really having a good time on the ice here. Reed, you mentioned that this is a really fun course. It's oh got everything. Oh, there? big time. Anderson, it's got Jersey some Anderson, real technical Anderson, features, the a huge JC jump, a skating section, one, some nice two. chicanes. I mean, just a great mix of everything in this track. All right, semifinal heat number one in the blocks. These are the semifinals. The semifinals. Mirko Lati. 
There you see him, second over from the right. Right next to him, Yoni Sarinen. Then we've got Yessi Sauer and Alex warning. And Mirko, great start. Sauren sneaks into second place. Sarinen holding down third at the moment. Here comes Schreifels from the back as they go towards that BF Goodrich traction corner. 180 degree turn you gotta make there, and you absolutely need traction, and your balance needs to be on point to come around there clean. Lati, Sauren, Sarden, three fins in the lead on this one. Where's Schreifels? There he is. He's coming. He's coming from the back. Oh, some contact between the two fins. I wonder if that's gonna cause a bit of a protest in the finish area. Mirko Lati, he's got about the cleanest run of the night so far, taking this one down quite easily. And then it's Saurinen and Saurin, and there you go. Saurin is going to punch the button, and that's going to give us our first protest here in the juniors. Yeah, let's see what happened here in the replay. I think it started kind of pushed out Sarn in that last drop section as we've seen earlier tonight. It's we should mention though that incidental contact is okay, so protecting your line is fine. If you come in a little bit hot and sort of shoulder shoulder guy, that's okay. But if you physically, if the judges or anybody sees you actually pushing or pulling, then you could get a DQ here. Let's watch. Look at that nice move. See how Mirko pre-jumps that? His feet are already planted in the direction he wants to go. So when he lands, those skates totally take an edge and turn him right around that corner. All right, this uh, is that section here. Tough to tell from that angle. Reed. That is really tough to tell. It's, let's see it from here. You know, it looked to me like, it looked to me like Saar didn't really control his speed. He didn't really have any reason to push that hurt. Though it's possible his speed took him to the outside and it was kind of out of his control. Different angle right Let's here. Let's watch it right here. It looks like he got a bit handsy there, but it's so tough to tell. There's a judge right there at that corner though. <laughs> As you can see, they're still buddies. Whatever happens, you know, these are the two top guys. Actually, they're gonna have many, many more battles just like that. <laughs> Guaranteed. <laughs> Yeah, if, if, you're, if you're moving your <laughs> The funny thing is I've skated that corner, you know, five, six times this week. And uh, without anybody on me, I've basically hit the boards like that three times. So it just shows you how the speed really sucks you to the outside. So it's really easy to make that mistake. And you guys are normally skating with a really flat sharp on your skates, like one and a quarter, one and two quarter, one and a half or one and three quarters. Uh, so if you've got that really flat, that you're, you're sacrificing a bit of grip in those situations for the glide that you get in other sections of the course. Absolutely, yeah, you might get a little faster going straight, gliding, but you know, gripping those corners. All right, Yessi Sauren, excuse me, Yessi Sauren's protest is denied, so Sauren will go through with Mirko Lati. That means semifinal heat number two is in the blocks, ready to go. All right, this one's got Lukas Korsatansky, Philip Carvajero, Max Neymark, and Luca Engler. Who's going to the finals? A rider's ready, a five seconds warning. with a good start, takes the early lead. Korsatansky right there, shoulder to shoulder with him. Carva Hierro though, oh my goodness, how tight is this? Angler putting on the funky brakes into the BF Goodrich traction corner. Carva Hierro trying to find the line, but he just gets black, blocked out by the big bodies up front. Korsatansky now with the lead. Angler in second, no, excuse me, I believe that is Angler out in front with Korsatansky sitting in second place at the moment. Down goes Carvajero. Korsatansky is now in the lead with yeah, Neymar. Neymar, but Angler has now moved up into that second position, coming over the tombstone, and it is going to be Korsatansky and Angler. Well, I couldn't even keep up. Oh my goodness, Positions that was were so much changing. Non-stop, and we got a oh, protest. We got our second protest of the night. 
This time by Max Neymar. Yeah. What's your name? Neymar. Neymar, yeah. Let's see if the judges take a review of this here. I'm well, not these sure guys, that happened. These guys really want it. I mean, they're they're taking every advantage they possibly can out of this thing, and two protests and two semifinal heats. That's unheard of. That was a super fun heat because everybody was so even. I mean, we saw so many position changes. All four of those guys could have moved on. I mean, just awesome race, awesome competition. Look at everybody side by side coming into the big jump. Everybody sucks it up. I love, love when we have shoulder to shoulder racing like that. It doesn't happen too often. But when you get guys this evenly matched, look at everybody coming around. Look at Carvajero trying to find that line. Just, he was so much better on that inside. He got the brakes hard, gets inside the bag on that BF Bridge traction corner, but he just didn't have the power coming out. And Korsatansky really started to pull away at the end. Look at Caballero, just lost it, coming over the last drop there. And here's where I think the protest happened with Neymar and Engler as they got tangled up coming through the Hyundai end section, which is a very tricky section with all those elevation changes and off camber sections and the rough ice. It's a tough thing to go through there, especially if you're shoulder to shoulder like these guys were. Yeah, we really don't have a good view of it. To me, I think they were just kind of shoulder to shoulder, hit some ruts, and Neymar went down. Let's see what the judges have to say about that. You can tell Neymar really felt strongly that something happened when he came to that finish. Protest denied. There you see it. So Neymar's protest is denied. He is out. And that means Lukas Korczatanski and Luka Engler will be going on to the final with Mirko Lati and Joni Saarinen. Look at that track, it is fantastic. The new position they put here this year changed significantly uh, the start area from 2015, moved it down Jasper Avenue about 200 meters, and what a difference it's made. It gives us an opportunity to have a much longer start, much more speed out of the start, and of course that helps us with the big Canadian Air, big air jump, which has been fun. All right, and we're going to hear from Jesse Sauren because of that protest. He is down in the finish area with three. Jesse, your protest was denied. Why did you make that protest? I made it because I was not sure if he pushed me or if he was just faster than me. So I was not sure that I wanted to make, make sure that he didn't push me. That was a tough heat going up against Merko and Yoni. I mean, tell me about the standard of competition. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's always tough competition with the two Finns, so, and it's super fun to race with the friends. Thank you, and well done on the season. Yeah. Well, Reid, as I said, you know, he, he really tried everything, and uh, we saw that two times in the semifinals. Uh, every advantage you can take to get into that final is what these guys are going to take here. Yeah, you got to race on the edge, or you're not going to make it happen. I mean, guys are maybe on the verge of getting a DQ in a situation like that, like we've seen, but it's just not enough. It's incidental contact, it happens, it's racing, it's rubbing. Uh, you got to take risks here. Both these guys made it happen, they're moving on to the finals. All right, well, the final will have Luka Engler, Yoni Saarinen, Lukas Korsatansky, and Mirko Lati. Now, Mirko will be moving up to the men's ranks permanently next season, as I mentioned, but he's already tested the waters to see where he stands. The men's category is under pressure from the young guns. I think it's extremely important, the addition of the juniors uh, into Ice Cross Downhill. It kind of gives them an opportunity to race with equally skilled athletes. I know that if you just toss a 16-year-old in with the men, it's very hard for them to compete at that level. So it's not making them any better if they're just getting smoked heat after heat. And if they jump in with the juniors, it gives them a little more of a battle. It 
makes them learn more about the sport and how to race. So I think it's huge to have the juniors racing each other instead of racing us all the time. One in particular is making the men's field nervous. 21-year-old junior world champion Mirko Lati from Finland. Heart rate's pretty high there. In two seasons, Mirko won six out of seven events with one more to go. He also raced very well in the men's category. I know that he gave like Max a good run for his money in Finland. They ended up in a lot of heats together and Max said he was a real thorn in his side. With his first full-time season in the men's event coming up, physical fitness is key. Of course, I need to train more for the men's world championship. I think there's a lot of years in front of me, so so it's time to progress. All right, well, the people on the side of the track here at the Dasher Boards are all having a good time here in Edmonton, Alberta, in Canada. This is the final Red Bull Crash Ice event of the season and the last Ice Cross Downhill World Championship stop of 2017-18. There we see Mirko Lati and Yoni Saren in two of the strong fins. One of them will be moving on to the men's category next year. That's Mirko Lati. We talked about that already. Yoni Saren and will continue to race in the juniors, but we're going to see some strong contenders coming from the junior categories over the next years. And this is like uh, we saw in that story Cameron Nas alluded to. It's a perfect opportunity to develop the sport even farther than it has done in the last few years. Yeah, we really needed this addition. I mean, like you said, there's no way for these guys to jump in and compete against the men at this point. The level is just way too high, but we're seeing these guys come into the sport, being a little rough, but as each race goes on, all these juniors are getting stronger and stronger. And like we've seen, by the time they turn 21, like Mirko, he's ready to move into the men's and possibly even dominate there. And they also have the opportunity to ride during the Riders' Cup events, which are events by the riders for the riders. The tracks are a little less challenging than the big main event Red Bull Crash Ice tracks. And uh, it's also an opportunity to develop your skills on transitions, on rough ice, on flat uh, skating surfaces where you've got these off-camber sections that really challenge that balance that we talked about earlier on in the show. So all of these elements come together and play a role in developing the young talent to come to these big Red Bull Crash Ice events. And this is what we're seeing with guys like Saarinen and Lati. It's just awesome development of our sport. You know, five years ago, it was just so simplistic. We had the Red Bull crashed ices. That was the only opportunity. You had to qualify in flat ices. Now we have Riders' Cups races. We have the Junior World Championship. We have the Women's World Championship. So much opportunity to develop new athletes to join the big leagues here of Red Bull Crash Ice. And there is the trophy for the Junior World Champion 2018. Well, we already know Mirko Lati is going to be hoisting that thing at the end of the night. So this is basically, like I said earlier on, a victory lap for Mirko. And it's about who can potentially win the event ahead of Mirko Lati. And that's a big deal for him um, to try and have that perfect season. This would also be a world record. Let's head to the top for our yeah. final. All right, how are we doing out there? Red Bull Crash Ice Edmonton. So, as I mentioned, a possible world record. The first ever perfect season on the line. It's in the junior category, but who cares? Mirko Lati could be the only rider to ever have a perfect season. Will he do it tonight? Anything can and will happen. Lukas Korsatansky is in there along with Yoni Saarinen and Luca Engler. Let's get a closer look at these guys. There we have Luca Engler, the German. He's been so strong. He's a big boy. He's got lots of power in his legs and his skill has improved all season long. Right next to him. There he is, Lukas Korzatanski. I mentioned he's been a bright spot with the skill level that he brought at the very beginning of this season, and he's been growing stride for stride. Mirko Lati, can he do what he wants to do here with a perfect season? The only man that may be pushing him for it is Yoni Saarinen. Here we go, it is the men's junior final here in Edmonton. Let's rock it, let's roll it. Ryan 
Fighters ready. A five seconds warning. Spring loaded, they go, and Mirko Lathi with a great start. So strong out of the gate, such a great glider. He's a big body, and he's got a great head for the game. He is out in front, but look at this. Luka Angler battling hard from the back, and right now it is Korsatansky sitting in second place. Great battle on him, behind him, Sarin and trying to catch up. Korsatansky doing a great job to block in that very narrow section. Now the course widens out. Mirko Lati is getting pressured now by Korsatansky, who's coming hot and hard to try and catch up. Lati perfect over the tombstone, and he's gonna do it. It's gonna be the perfect season for Mirko Lati. Unbelievable. Four out of four wins for the Finn. That is incredible. But what a great battle by Lukas Korsatansky to come in second place, just ahead of Yoni Sainen, who got third. And Luka Engler, what a great season for him as well, taking fourth here in Edmonton. Yeah, I thought Korsatansky might make a small push on Lati at the end if any mistakes were made, but just no chance. Lati is just too good, man. He said four in a row, two world championships in a row. Now he's ready to try to dominate the men's division. This guy is going to be a force to be reckoned with. Yeah, let's take a look at this here. That start of his is so amazing. I mean, let's watch Lati here, how precise he was, sucking up. The jump. And there's that move you talked about yeah. earlier. Landing right in a perfect position to take that corner. That love in that BF Goodrich section there. He is a machine. But like we talked about, just a battle with Sarnin and Korsatansky the whole way down. Back and forth, back and forth. Korsatani took it at the end. But man, this is all lot, dude, man. He is just a complete stud. And you never see that. Look at this, turning around with a couple meters to go to the finish line. That is madness. He moonwalks his way across the finish line. All right, so we have our world champion, Mirko Lati, at the finish area. Let's hear from him. Mirko, congratulations. A perfect end to a perfect season. Were there any nerves going into that race? Of course, it's my last race, so. Uh... I was a little bit nervous, and uh, it's awesome to race here in New City for me, and uh, it's amazing. You have broken a record. No other rider has won every single Red Bull Crash Ice event. How hard have you worked for this? Uh, I train a lot in off season, and uh, I've been training hard for this event, and uh, it worked out pretty good. That is your last junior race. Now you've got the men's. You qualified second. Do you think you can win tomorrow? <laughs> That's a big challenge, but of course I try to try to win tomorrow and uh, at least be on the podium. Congratulations on your Junior World Championship. Well done. Thank you. Thank you. Wow. That's all I got to say about that is wow. That is four in a row for Mirko Lati, and even with the throwout rule, there's nobody even close to him in points. 3,000 points, that's unheard of. And we also have to point out that Mirko will be racing in the men's division tomorrow on Saturday, and he qualified with the second fastest time. As we look at the results here in Edmonton, Mirko Lati with a clear, clean win. Lukas Korsatansky with a fantastic season in second place. Yoni Saarinen, one of those guys that's gonna be challenging for the top spot next year in third, and of course, Luca Engler in fourth place.
Hamilton, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the prize giving ceremony for the Red Bull Crash Ice, Ice Cross Downhill Overall World Junior Champion, Mirko Latte! confidence that he exudes. He's got to be taking this into tomorrow's race. He finished second in the shootout. He's got a big trophy. He won the event here. How is he going to do against the big dogs? I think he's going to do great. He shows great wisdom, good composure. You know, he's just been walking away with it. He's going to be elbow to elbow with a lot of these bigger guys, but he's shown he has the speed in the shootout, and he's got the size, he's got the stamina, and now he's got a world championship Mirko trophy. Latte, so he four in a row, your junior world champion, and he finishes it with a bullet here in Edmonton. Amazing. So the Red Bull Crash Dice Junior World Champion has been crowned in epic fashion for the perfect season. And we'll do it again tomorrow for the men and women. For Brianna McShane and Reed Whiting, I'm Troy Mannering saying goodbye till tomorrow. Saturday is going to be rock and roll. Take care, everyone. I really want to get that World Championship title back to Canada. Um, that's my goal this season, and uh, I'm happy to have the top spot right now. And I know uh, Nazar will be chasing me down, so I'm happy to see what happens there. He's coming down to the last race like I did last year. better than ninth going into uh, Edmonton, so uh, hoping to do that. It'd be great to be back in Canada. Oh, Edmonton. I need to get redemption on Edmonton. I really liked the race in Edmonton in 2015. I actually only made the first place, I think, in the shootout. In my experience, out of all the races between, I mean, always St. Paul and the Canada stops seem to draw the biggest crowds. That one was pretty amazing, though. That rivaled, for sure, St. Paul um, when, it's, when we've had the most people, I would say. So they did a good job. Yeah, that was my first race, it was Edmonton, so 15th. I kind of went into it as a nobody. Um, I think I finished uh, mid-20s, which I didn't expect. Built my confidence up and kind of what got me hooked on the sport. And been training and competitive in it ever since. Um, Edmonton was a great race for me. Um, that's where I won the world championship title in 2015. And yeah, I'm excited to get back there. I think I'll have a lot of goosebumps, um, you know, thinking back to it. And um, I'm very excited. I'm really just looking forward to get out there, see some college friends, and have a great time. And, you know, hopefully at the end be crowned the world champion.